The constitutional question facing the United States Supreme Court in the 1803 case of Stewart v. Laird arose out of the bitterly contested election of 1800. President John Adams and his Federalists had lost both the presidency and Congress to Thomas Jefferson and his Democratic Republicans. The lame-duck Federalists spent much of the interim between the November election and Jefferson's March inauguration trying to flood the federal judiciary with Federalist judges. The Federalist Congress passed the Judiciary Act of 1801, sometimes known as the Midnight Judges Act. The act reorganized the federal trial courts and created many new judgeships. President Adams quickly filled the new seats, and the lame-duck Senate quickly confirmed the new Federalist judges. Adams also named John Marshall to be Chief Justice of the United States. Once in office, Jefferson and Congressional Democratic Republicans quickly moved to undo the Federalists' maneuvers. Congress repealed the 1801 Judiciary Act, then passed the Judiciary Act of 1802. It restructured the circuit courts into six circuits and assigned one Supreme Court justice to each circuit to serve as a trial judge alongside a full-time trial court judge. The parties in Stewart v. Laird got caught up in all this restructuring. John Laird sued Hugh Stewart in federal court in Virginia. In December of 1801, Laird received a preliminary judgment from the Fourth Circuit Court for the Eastern District of Virginia, the trial court created by the 1801 Judiciary Act. That court also issued a writ of execution ordering the marshal to seize property owned by Stewart in order to satisfy the judgment and then submit a return to the court at its next sitting in April of 1802. The April proceeding was postponed until December of 1802. In December, the marshal's return was considered by the Court of the United States for the Fifth Circuit in the District of Virginia, a court created by the 1802 Judiciary Act. Chief Justice Marshall, writing circuit, presided as a trial court judge. Stewart argued that the Fifth Circuit Court couldn't proceed on a judgment and execution issued by the Fourth Circuit Court, a court that no longer existed. Marshall, in his capacity as trial judge, overruled Stewart's objections and granted Laird final judgment and the proceeds of the Marshall's asset sale. Stewart appealed to the United States Supreme Court.